All right, so learning objective four tells you what happens or shows you what happens to those numbers that we posted in the journal. Um, so a transaction occurs, we analyze it, uh, we go ahead and, and journalize that entry. So we say, for example, we're debiting cash for a certain amount and we're crediting common stock for a certain amount. Well, that's in the journal. What happens to those numbers after is what this is about. What happens is from the journal, um, everything gets posted into a very, I because they used to be physical books back in the day, a very, very large book of accounts called a ledger. So we're going to be talking a little bit about the ledger. Uh, actually, our learning objective four is all about the ledger, but we're only going to be talking a little bit about it. Um, and transferring the numbers from the journal into the ledger is something that's called posting. So posting is really about um, copying, in essence, the numbers from the journal over into its spot in the ledger. So let's talk a little bit about the ledger so you'd understand. So uh, the ledger of a company basically is a large book of all the accounts. <clears throat> now, what's different about the ledger uh, that it's important to know is that every single account um, is listed in it with its own section, almost like chapters in a book, right? There's chapter one, which is separate from chapter two, which is separate from chapter three, et cetera. Although they certainly tell a, a bigger story. Uh, the ledger is sort of like that. When you first open the ledger, you're gonna see the asset accounts listed in the order that you would list them on in a classified balance sheet. Cash is always gonna be first. So when you open up a ledger, you'll see the cash account and only the cash account. And everything that's happened in the cash account that we transferred from the journal into the ledger. Anything that happened to cash in the journal will then be posted, transferred to the specific account in the ledger. So when we open up a ledger, the very first account we'll always see is cash. And because cash is a very, very busy account, um, there's usually a lot of activity in, in cash. So this is something that we, um, you'll spend a lot of time figuring out uh, in terms of the cash accounts, the most active account, lots of debits, lots of credits. Uh, we have to sort those through and make sure that's appropriately posted and balanced. And this is part of the process. Um, for our company here, um, Sierra Corporation, uh, there's you know a supplies account that's listed. Uh, there's a land account, there's an equipment account. Uh, the asset accounts are listed first in the ledger. And again, very important to know, they're listed in the order that we would show them on the classified balance sheet, <clears throat> okay? And every single one of these accounts would have its own separate chapter of sorts in the ledger, would have its own little space in the ledger that shows only what happened in that account. Where does it get that information? It comes right from the journal into that ledger, showing us what happened in each account. After the asset accounts are listed, the liability accounts are listed next. Again, in the order you would see them on the classified balance sheet. Uh, and so when you get to that section of the ledger, uh, notes payable will have its own section and whatever happened for notes payable would show. Accounts payable would have its own section and you would see what happened there, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the last accounts that are listed, um, I, I wanna classify this a little bit more. Stockholders equity accounts are listed third. So asset accounts are listed first, liability accounts are listed second. The traditional stockholders equity accounts are listed third, meaning um, common stock retained earnings, which are on the balance sheet would be listed. But the dividends account is also grouped with this in the ledger, okay? Um, and so that's how that's listed. Then the revenue accounts, because in many cases, companies have more than one revenue account. In our case, for Sierra Corporation, they only have one revenue account. But in reality, there are a lot of revenue accounts that our companies uh, keep track of. 
So each one of those revenue accounts would be listed uh, fourth in the order of, of the ledger. So you have to dive pretty deep down into that ledger to find your revenue accounts. And of course, your expense accounts then are listed last, which means they would be listed uh, fifth in terms of the category in the ledger. Okay. So the ledger is quite a hefty book. And uh, back in the day, of course, now, thankfully, it's all electronic. Um, but uh, it was quite a hefty book. And again, every single account would have its own section in the ledger showing everything that happened to that account specifically. And those numbers came from the journal. Those numbers came from the journal. Okay. Uh, the most important thing to understand is that, and this is true when you open a business, <clears throat> and some, some of you have expressed interest in perhaps opening a business someday. Well, when you open a business, the very first thing you need to do is understand you have to do accounting. Right? You have to keep track of all those transactions. But before you can actually do the accounting, you actually have to put together what's called a chart of accounts. You actually have to list uh, the types of uh, the specific accounts your company will have and will be using on a regular basis. And that's called a chart of accounts. And so here for Sierra Corporation, this is Sierra Corporation's chart of accounts. Uh, the asset accounts are listed first. The liability accounts are listed second, as you see. Stockholders equity accounts are listed third with dividends uh, included on in that. Revenue accounts are listed fourth and all the expense accounts are listed fifth in terms of the order. <clears throat> this is the exact same order they'd be listed in the general ledger. But it's important before you know, when you start a business you, and transactions occur, you need accounts. So all this has to be kind of thought of upfront. Before you can do the accounting, you have to know what accounts you have. So this is your listing of accounts, okay? Sierra Corporation has these accounts Listed. Now, of course, <clears throat> you can always add to those accounts as time goes on. Uh, so more, if you have another line of revenue, for example, you can add a new revenue account. If you have uh, purchased other types of assets, you can list those as well. So over time, this can grow. But it's important that we have a starting point. Okay. <coughs> Pardon. Uh, we have the process here of transferring uh, the numbers from the general uh, journal, from the journal, into the specific accounts on the general ledger. Okay, so here, as you notice in the journal, the very, very first um, transaction on October the 1st was that we debited cash for $10,000 and we credited common stock for $10,000. That was the very first thing we did for Sierra Corporation. Well, under the posting, which is transferring, we're going to be taking this $10,000 in cash on the debit side and showing that in the general uh, ledger, in the cash account, as a $10,000 debit to cash on October the 1st. Um, now, because it's a debit to cash and cash has a normal debit balance. That's also the balance in the account. Here's where the references come in. The references here for the journal that I said we would explain later simply means that cash is account number 101 in the ledger. And so the reference 101 simply means that in the cash account is account number 101 and this $10,000 was transferred to <clears throat> or posted over to it. In the, uh, in the actual ledger, the reference is about the journal. J1 simply is the journal page one, um, meaning that that's where they can find this debit to cash in the journal. And so there's a, there's a cross reference to that that's important to sort of understand, okay? <clears throat> um, but trans posting is simply transferring, what you just see here, boom. It's a relatively easy process. You just have to make sure you're keeping track, <laughs> okay? It's one line at a time, one line at a time, gets posted accordingly. And it gets posted in the column, right, that 
uh, we did it in, in, uh, in the journal. So this was a debit to cash in the journal. So that debit is gonna be shown on the debit side in the ledger. Same thing for common stock when we get to that. Okay. All right, so posting is what? A, B, C, or D? Well, posting basically is a transfer of that journal entry <clears throat> to its specific ledger account, okay? Showing what happened in the ledger, okay? All right, so here is the whole, this is the whole thing illustrated, and I think it's very, very good. Uh, if you have your book with you and you want to follow along, this actually starts on page 111. I think it's interesting that it's one of 11, but actually on page 111 in your book is where this starts. <coughs> this was the very, very last thing that you did. We did the analysis. We, uh, we, we did basic analysis. We, we did an equation analysis. We did debit and credit analysis. We put it in the journal. This is what happens from the journal. It goes or gets posted into the ledger. So for event one that we've already talked about, um, you know, stockholders invested 10,000 cash for common stock. We analyzed it, more cash, more common stock. Cash increases on the debit side, common stock increases on the credit side. This is our journal entry. This is what it looks like posted. Again, these are separate accounts in the ledger. The cash account will have its own section. And there you will see the October 1st debit transferred here. Common stock account, <clears throat> again, will have its own section in, uh, in the ledger. And what happened in the common stock account on October 1st was a credit. Right. So that's gonna be posted into the, the ledger. And that's really all we're doing with posting, okay? This is event number one. We're just gonna go through the events. And again, it's relatively uh, good to review. And it, this, is, this is all the stuff you've been able to do in a short period of time. And so this is good. So event number two, they borrowed cash. Uh, they borrowed uh, $5,000 through a notes payable. We analyzed it. We said we have more cash, but we also have more notes payable. We then, <coughs> said that cash increases on the debit side, no payable increases on the credit side. That led to our journal entry down here. We have a journal entry, debit cash, 5,000, credit notes payable, 5,000. From the journal, it goes to their respective accounts in the ledger. So this $5,000 cash debit shows up as another line in the cash account. It doesn't take away the original one. Again, the ledger <coughs> is, shows all the activity in the account. So all the activity has to be listed in the account, okay? And so this $5,000 debit to cash will get posted on a separate line. Again, on the debit side of the cash account, which is that left side, right? But now we have notes payable, this $5,000 credit. Notes payable has its own section uh, in the ledger as well as its own little section. And this credit is going to be posted on the credit side. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so that's what, so when we open up the, the ledger and we go to the notes payable section of the ledger, the only thing we're going to see in the notes payable section is on October 1st, there was a $5,000 credit to notes payable. But if we go back to the very beginning of the ledger and we open it up to cash, we see two things have already happened to cash. A $10,000 debit <clears throat> that happened from common stock, right? And this $5,000 debit, which was the loan that we just got. So the question then becomes, what's the balance in the cash account? Well, <clears throat> in order to figure out a balance in any account, we add up the side in which it's increasing and we take away the side of which it decreases. So we have $15,000 of increases in the cash account, no decreases in the cash account. So the balance in cash is a $15,000 debit balance. And that's what I wanted to emphasize too. When we ask for a balance in the account, 
regardless of the account. <clears throat> you have to tell us what side the balance is on. So that's why we would say here, cash has a $15,000 credit, sorry, debit balance, okay? Debit balance in cash, because that's where all of the activity has been in the account on the increase side. So the balance is these two added together. <coughs> okay, doing good. All right, uh, the third event, we used cash to buy equipment. <clears throat> we analyzed that. We said, okay, we have more equipment, but we have less cash. We did our debit and credit analysis, which meant more equipment is on the debit side less cash is on the credit side. We did our journal entry showing the debit to equipment for 5,000 and the credit to cash for 5,000. These numbers get posted into the specific accounts in the ledger. <clears throat> so this is the very first time equipment has been affected. So the equipment account will show a debit for $5,000. That's the transfer of this here into the ledger account. But like we were saying, cash is a very, very busy account. Cash is, is affected a lot uh, in accounting. So we have to keep track of it. This $5,000 credit to cash gets posted on the credit side of the cash account because we have less cash. So when we talk about what's the balance in cash, what would you say? And this is just an open question. How would you express to me what the balance in cash would be. Anybody want to take a shot? No, you're a little timid. Is the water that, that cold? You don't want to put your foot in? It would be a $10,000 debit balance in cash. We say that because cash has $15,000 of debits, which meant increases but now we had a decrease in cash. So the balance is the difference, right? $15,000 of increases minus $5,000 of decreases leaves $10,000. The 10,000 is on the debit side. So we would say cash now has a $10,000 debit balance. Does that make sense? Yeah, does that make sense to a lot of you? I'm, I'm kind of going, I'm going through Brandon, uh, Aiden, that makes sense? Dennis, yeah, okay, all right. <clears throat> all right, so that's important because you're gonna be asked that question, what's the, what's the balance in the cash account? It's a very common question in accounting. <clears throat> you have to know how much cash you have. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, if I can make it with my voice. Event number four here. We received that $1,200 cash advance, right? <clears throat> for, uh, for guided services, right? To be completed in the future. So we, we analyzed this. We said, okay, we just got a whole bunch of cash from a, from a client. So we have an increase in cash, but all these services are not paid. They're paid for, but we have, we owe them. And we say that's unearned revenue unearned service revenue. <clears throat> cash increases on the debit side, unearned service revenue increases on the credit side. So then we did our journal entry, debit to cash, <clears throat> credit to unearned service revenue. Okay, now we post it. So this particular $1,200 uh, debit to cash is gonna be posted on the debit side of cash because it's, it's on the debit side in the journal, it's gonna be on the debit side in the ledger. Unearned service revenue got, got a credit. Unearned service revenue got a credit. <clears throat> so this credit is going to be posted on the credit side of unearned service revenue in the ledger. So now here's an open question. What's the balance in cash? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm asking you just so I can have a chance to cough. Uh, yeah, no, actually, no, it's a real question. I'm joking. Open question. Is $1,200 on the uh, debit side? Well, that's not the only, 
that's not the only amount that's in cash. You can't forget about all the other activity in the cash account. Oh, okay. Right. So the balance in cash, remember, are all of the increases, which are on the debit side, subtracting out all of the decreases on the credit side. So if you add up these numbers and subtract out these, this number, what's your balance? Eleven thousand two hundred. Yep. Or what side is it on? On a debit side. Okay. So again, in accounting, we have to, and, and you're right. It's an eleven thousand two hundred dollar debit balance. Everyone understand that? That's that's really important. To under it's really important to understand, which is why I always stop. And I'm going to be asking you this all the time. Okay, because it's important to understand how we get an account balance. And cash is the most active account, so it's good to play with cash. <clears throat> so cash has a debit balance of $11,200, which basically means right, the debit side is larger than the credit side by $11,200. So $11,200 on the debit side means just that. Okay. Hang in there, there's gonna be more questions. <laughs> oh, that's my evil laugh it's almost halloween i'm working on it you'll have to give me like a rating later on okay it'd be better if i wasn't coughing all the time okay event number five Woo! we received ten thousand dollars cash uh because we performed services <clears throat> for this company copa company we analyzed it. We said, okay, we got more cash, but we did work. So that's more revenue. Okay. If you performed work, that's revenue. Uh, increasing cash is on the debit side. Increasing revenue is on the credit side. This is how it looks in the journal. The debit to cash for 10,000, credit to receivable, uh, sorry, revenue for 10,000. <clears throat> then, of course, we have to transfer the numbers, which is what posting is, into the specific accounts in the ledger. This $10,000 debit to cash is going to be posted here. This $10,000 credit to service revenue is going to be posted in the service revenue account on the credit side in the ledger. So here is another open question. What's the balance in cash? 16,200 on the debit side. Okay, and uh, that's correct. Um, and you'll get used to saying these things, but it's a, yeah, a $16,200 debit balance. And that's really kind of how we express things most of the time. Okay, but nice job, great. Okay, let's keep going. Does everyone understand that, by the way? Everyone understand how we got $16,200, because I debit balance, right? The debit side is $16,200 more than the credit side. Yeah? So my only thing is that um, even though both service revenue and- cash Hang on, what did, what did you say? It's actually, it's, it's, it's not 16. What, did, what was the balance? I'm sorry. I said uh, 16,200. No, it's not. 16. It's 21 and 200, yeah, no? I, I misspoke. So these two basically cancel out. So the only side is, is debit side, $21,200. My bad, oh my God. Oh my God. Serious mistake. My apologies. Okay. Um, so cash has a 16,000, sorry, $21,200. Uh, debit balance. Okay, my bad. So that service revenue side, that's that. Well, that's a separate account. That's like going to chapter five when you're in chapter one. We're only for again. Each of these accounts have its own section in the ledger, and I'm only asking you in this case, what's the balance in cash? I'm not asking you anything about service revenue. That would be in a separate page in the ledger. So the ledger is a very, very large book that keeps track of each of these accounts separately. 
all the activity in those accounts separately. We get that information from the uh, journal. The, the information comes from the journal and gets posted into the ledger account. But each lever, ledger account is separate. So I'm asking about cash. We don't care right now about service revenue. If I asked you what the balance of service revenue is, we wouldn't care about cash because they are, they're on two separate places in, in the ledger. Again, it's like looking at through chapter 16 and going back to chapter three or something like this. I mean, just two separate places in, in a book. Right. Um, and I think that's mentally, I think what you have to get used to here. But my bad for misspeaking on the balance. Mistakes happen, particularly in the morning. I haven't even finished my coffee. <laughs> Maybe that's, that's the trick. All right, are we okay with that? Let's move on. Event number six here is we paid rent for $900 cash. We analyzed it. <clears throat> we said rent is an expense. Uh, what do we do with expenses on the income statement, right? Expenses take away from the profit. They take away from the net income. And so expenses, in essence, take away from stockholders' equity. And of course, we used uh, cash to pay for it. So we actually have less uh, cash as well. We thought about this, debit and credit analysis. <clears throat> and this is one of those uh, accounts you have to really think about. Expense accounts take away from stockholders' equity. So expense accounts increase on the debit side because the debit side of stock of retained earnings takes away from the profit. And that's exactly what expenses do. They take away. Um, so we're going to be debiting the rent expense account by $900. And we used cash. So we're going to credit cash $900. So that's what's uh, in the journal. Okay. <clears throat> then we have to transfer these, which is what posting is, right? transferring from the journal into its specific accounts. Again, these are, these are on two very separate pages in, in the ledger. Very, very, you know, cash is the very first account you see when you open a ledger. The expenses are way back, way, way back in the ledger. Rent expense here was debited 900. We posted in the rent expense account here. Again, this is a separate account in the ledger. This $900 debit is gonna be posted on the rent expense account on the debit side. Cash is always very busy. $900 credit is gonna show up on the credit side of cash, of the cash account. So now the question is, <coughs> pardon me, and it's an open question, and hopefully somebody new pops in. Um, what's the balance in cash? Any money? Do I have to call a name, please? $20,300 debit balance. Nice job. Excellent. I'll drink to that. Excellent. All right. Does everyone understand that cash has a $20,300 debit balance? All right. <clears throat> the debit side is larger than the credit side by $20,300. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Drugs are bad. Mm -hmm. Event number seven. They paid $600 for an insurance policy. It's a one year insurance policy. So when you buy insurance, that's your asset, right? Uh, it's an asset that we're gonna be using up pretty quickly. So it's part of our current assets. We have an increase in prepaid insurance. So we have more prepaid insurance and we pay cash for those types of things. And so we have less cash. Uh, we went ahead and said, okay, a debit to prepaid insurance shows more prepaid insurance. Credit to cash shows less cash. That's the journal entry. 
we transfer them or post it into their specific accounts in the ledger. This $600 debit will go on the debit side of prepaid insurance in its little section of the ledger. Cash is active, right? The $600 uh, credit to cash for the 4th of Oct October is gonna show up here on the credit side of the cash account. What is in the balance in cash now? I have to call a name. Mm -hmm. Aiden, what do you think it is? I'm trying to add up all the numbers right now. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll use my calculator. The 60, is it a, on the credit side? It's 6,200. Well, we don't care because <clears throat> that's not a balance in cash. Balances, are, balances and accounts are only on one side. So is it just a uh, 20,500? It's, it's almost like me asking you, like, what's the balance in your savings account? And you say, well, I, I took out $6,200 in cash from my savings account. That doesn't tell me what the balance is. It so is it 26,200 on the uh, debit side? Okay, but... That's not the, uh, if those are the increases in the account and you have to take away the decrease in the account, right? So uh, I got $19,700 debit balance. Did anyone else get that? The debit side is $19,700 more than the credit side. That's the balance. Remember, only two things can happen to the accounts. And remember, this is like your savings account. If someone asks you what's your balance in your savings account, you don't tell them about all the times you put money in and all the times you take money out. You just give them a number, right? That's what's expected here. That's what's expected here. In cash, everything on the debit side increases cash. So we know there are increases on the debit side. Everything on the credit side means less cash, decreases in cash. The balance is the difference. And the balance will always be on the debit side because we'll always have a balance in cash. There's no negative, you can't have a savings account of negative 200. The bank's not gonna give you money, All right? That's called a loan, not savings, All right? There's no negative account balances anywhere, <clears throat> okay? Um, you either have a debit balance or a credit balance in an account, that's it. So that's important because this is something that you're gonna be asked to do is to tell, is to explain what the balance is in an account. <clears throat> and so that's important. Does that does that help at all or make it am I coming yeah, down? Yeah, I got it now. I just I was I did that math and it was taking too long, but I got the same number now, nineteen thousand seven hundred. Yeah. All right. I don't I don't wanna be pounding away at, at this too much, but it's really an important thing to know. Um and I'm not coming down specifically on Aiden himself, but just in general, this is important. Okay. Okay. We're gonna keep going. All right, you can take a deep sigh of relief because uh, event number eight doesn't affect cash. Woo! <laughs> so I'm not gonna ask you the question right now. So event number Ocho. I'm gonna love that. I think I told you if I had a puppy, I think I would name him Ocho. Here, Ocho. Um, we bought supplies. On account, you remember that little phrase means important matters. When you're buying something on account, you gotta pay for it later. And so we bought a whole bunch of supplies. So we certainly got more supplies, but we gotta pay for it later. And any bill you gotta pay within the next 30 days is an accounts payable. It's a bill without interest. So whether it's a, uh, uh, a bill for supplies or your electric bill, those they don't charge you interest on that. You just have to pay it by the due date, which is usually 30 days away. So uh, general bills that are due um, are accounts payable. Uh, we know on the journal entry, supplies as an asset account increases on the debit side. Accounts payable as a liability account increases on the credit side. This is what the journal entry looks like. Now we're gonna be posting this into the ledger. 
The supplies account has not been affected yet. So this debit uh, will show up on the debit side for October 5th. Shows we have more supplies on October the 5th. This uh, credit to accounts payable means we have more uh, bills to pay. Accounts payable credit gets posted on the credit side for October 5th, showing that's the date that it occurred, okay? Event number nine, <clears throat> nothing happened, right? We hired people. Uh, it doesn't matter how much we promised to pay them. We didn't pay them on the spot. It's not a transaction. So no accounting is done, okay? Event number 10, okay, now we're, now we're affecting cash again because we paid a dividend, $500 cash dividend. We analyzed this. We said that, okay, dividends take away from stockholders' equity because if you remember on the retained earnings statement, we take dividends out of retained earnings, right? We subtract them out of retained earnings on the retained earnings statement, which means they decrease stockholders' equity. If anything that decreases stockholders' equity is gonna be on the debit side, okay? And of course, here we have less cash and we know that less cash is on the credit side. This was our journal entry. Debit to dividends, 500. Credit to cash, 500. So again, be prepared for the question that's coming. Uh, the dividends account, this is the first time that it's been affected. And so this uh, debit on October the 20th shows up on the debit side of the dividends account. This $500 credit to the cash account on the 24th is showing up right here. Okay, now again, it's a credit side entry to cash, which means there's less cash. So let me open the floor again. New and exciting. Yes, yes. What is the balance in cash now? Talk to me like an accountant, please. Who's next? Do I have to call on someone? It is 19,000, no, 19, nine, $19,200 on a debit side. Okay, yes, yeah, a debit balance of 19,200, nice job. Okay, great. The next event, the last event here, we paid our employees $4,000. We analyzed it, we said, okay, paying employees is a expense, salaries and wages expense. Remember, expenses we take away from our revenues, which is the same as saying we take them away from our profits, which is also the same as taking away from owner's equity. So here, expenses take away from stockholders' equity. Expenses are on the debit side. And we have less cash and we're already experienced with less cash, it's on the credit side. This was our journal entry. Debit to salaries and wages expense, credit to cash. You know what's coming, hang in there. So this debit will be posted to the salaries and wages expense account in the ledger. And this $4,000 credit is going to be posted to cash showing on October 26th. Uh, we have less cash. So now it's another open question. What is the balance in cash? I believe it's a debit of 15,200. Nice job. Yes, debit balance, 15,200 dollars. Everyone see, everyone understand that? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. So this is uh, basically uh, what we did. This is what the gen, this is what the journal looks like, right? For Sierra Corporation's transactions, all the ones we just reviewed. This is how it would look like in in the journal for all 11 transactions. This is what it looks like in the journal. After we post them, this is what the ledger would look like. Here's the general ledger. And I need you to think about all of these as having their own separate sections in the ledger. When you open up the ledger, the very first account you'll see is the cash account. And I asked you what the balance in the cash account was and a correct response came back, $15,000, $200 debit balance. Notice the balance is on the debit side of the cash account. 
not in the middle. It's not on the, it's only on the debit side. Uh, asset accounts have debit balances, period. Okay, of course, there, there's always exceptions to the rule that you're gonna learn about, but uh, in general, we say that. Only one thing happened in supplies. <clears throat> so the balance in the supplies account, $2,500 debit balance. Only one thing happened in prepaid insurance. Prepaid insurance has a $600 debit balance. Only one thing happened in the equipment account in October. Equipment has a $5,000 debit balance. Everyone understand that so far? Asset accounts all have debit balances. Notes payable, only one thing happened with notes payable when we borrowed that. Notes payable has a $5,000 credit balance. Notice it's on the credit side. Right. Liabilities have balances on the credit side. Accounts payable, only one thing happened there, and it has a $2,500 credit balance. Unearned service revenue is also a liability, and it has a $1,200 credit balance. So your three liability accounts have credit balances. Stockholders equity accounts, there's only one common stock uh, that we used in uh, Sierra Corporation so far. And common stock has a $10,000 credit balance. Again, it's on the credit side of the account. We learned that dividends take away. They take away from equity. And so dividends are gonna have balances on the debit side, the opposite side of common stock and retained earnings, right? Because it takes away. Service revenue is where the profit is for the company. Profits are, are good for the owners. Service revenue is always gonna be on the credit side. So service revenue has a $10,000 credit balance. Expenses take away from that. So expenses are gonna show up on the debit side. Salaries and wages expense has a $4,000 debit balance. Rent expense has a $900 debit balance. Can everyone read that with me okay? Do you have any questions on how I was reading that with you? This is how we, this is how accounting, this is how we talk, All right? What's the balance in unearned service revenue? You would tell me it's $1,200 credit balance. What's the balance in salaries or wages expense? You'd tell me it's a $4,000 debit balance. What's the balance in prepaid insurance? You would tell me what? Isabella, what would you tell me? What's the balance in prepaid insurance? Would it be 600 minus 500? No, um, all, all, oh, no, don't get, conf I think you're confused because these are next to each other. Look at all of these as separate accounts. So the cash account has its own section in the ledger. It's all by itself. Okay. There's nothing else to it. So when you look at cash, all you'll see is, 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 is the information that's here. You won't see anything else. So when you look at prepaid insurance account, it has its own, it's almost like turning to page uh, uh, 55 in your book. Only what's on page 55 matters. In this case, the only page, the only thing that's on the page that says prepaid insurance is what you see there in that box. Nothing else is there. This $500 is part of the dividends account, which oh. is separate. So tell me, and the balances, again, balances are only one side or the other. What's the balance in prepaid insurance now? 600. Well, you're missing something. Yes, 600, but what side is it on? You got to pick sides. Oh, on the debit side. Okay, there we go. So it's a $600 debit balance. Never forget, in, in for everyone, right? <clears throat> in accounting, the number itself doesn't mean much if it doesn't come with a side. Yeah, because that tells accountants everything they need to know, right? So $600 debit balance in, a, in prepaid insurance tells accountants everything they need to know. We have $600 of prepaid insurance, right? That's what it means. Okay. Um, I think Marsha has been pretty quiet. So let me give you a shot here. Um, what's the balance in supplies, Marsha? Thousand five hundred debit to 
Correct. So supplies has a $2,500 debit balance. Again, when you look at the supplies count, you'll only see this in the book. They've put this down as a summary. <laughs> um, but in, in actuality, if you had a, a, a very large ledger in front of you, they would have, they would be its own separate little areas. Okay, it's almost like a separate drawer uh, for each of these balances. So that's correct. Okay, so uh, this basically is posting. This is posting to the ledger, the transferring of the numbers from the journal into the ledger is what posting is about. We're simply transferring numbers from the journal into the ledger accounts to show independently what's happened in each account. All right, let's look at our little do it exercise in the book. If you have your book open, uh, you might want to turn to page 118. If not, that's okay too. Uh, but notice that what you see here is there's a, uh, there's a little bit of a <clears throat> journal provided for you with some transactions. Uh, happened July 1st. It looks like there was cash for common stock. On July the 9th, it looks like <clears throat> they performed uh, services on account. So they're waiting to receive payment on work they've already done. On the 24th, it looks like they received $4,000 cash uh, of the amount that they were waiting to receive. Right, so accounts receivable is waiting to receive the cash. So here, what you have is, <clears throat> you have the cash account listed, accounts receivable listed, common stock account is listed, and service revenue. All of these would be on separate pages, separate sections in the ledger. And they're asking you to post from, so you wanna post these transactions from the journal into specifically the ledger. You need two things to post. You need the date and you need the amount on the proper side. So the very first thing you're gonna be posting is this $30,000 debit to cash Okay, and I'm just not trying to write it out here too much because I can't write on my computer. Um, and so this $30,000 debit would show up on the debit side in the cash account. But you also have $30,000 of credit to common stock. So common stock would show a $30,000 credit in the account. Everyone see what I'm doing? Simply taking it from here and putting it in Taking it from here, putting it in, okay. We would put the date and the amount, put the date and the amount. So how it actually looks, oh, hang on. Oh, it doesn't actually show me. <laughs> oh my God, I have to write this stuff out. Okay, so in that sense, uh, this is July the 1st, $30,000 debit to cash is posted here. Uh, this is also July the 1st, July 1st, 7 1, just showing the date. Um, credit to common stock. So the first journal entry has been posted. The second happened on the 9th. On the 9th, we had a $6,000. So on 7 9, uh, we had a $6,000 debit to accounts receivable. <coughs> we also had a $6,000 credit to service revenue on the 9th of July, 7-9. So that's posting it here. Everyone see that? And then on the 24th, two things happened. We had a $4,000 debit to cash. So we're gonna list another $4,000 on the cash account on the debit side uh, from the transaction on the 24th. And it looks like we had a debit to accounts receivable for 4,000. Uh, again, from the 24th. Okay. And that basically is posting. I wish I could write nicer on my little laptop, but I can't. 
Uh, this is done for you in the book on page 118. So if, you're, if you look on page 118, <clears throat> you'll see the solution. But while we're looking at it, let me ask you an open question. What's the balance in the cash account after all this? What's the balance in the cash account? Thirty-four thousand on um, debit account. Yeah, thirty-four thousand dollar debit balance in cash is correct. Uh, here's a tricky one. What is the balance in accounts receivable? <clears throat> Open question. Or? It's two thousand dollars debited balance. Correct. See, accounts receivable is an asset account. The debit side is going to be bigger than the credit side. And the balance is $2,000 debit balance because the debit side is $2,000 greater than the credit side, right? $2,000 debit balance, just as she said. Does everyone see how that happened? All right, remember, accounts receivable is an asset, increases on the debit side, decreases on the credit side. So if you started with $6,000 and you received 4,000, you're waiting for two more, $2,000 more. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> All right, so um, that is what we call posting to the ledger. But as you saw, let me go back. As you saw in the ledger, the ledger has a whole bunch of balances, right? Cash has a uh, debit balance, supplies has a debit balance, but you look down here, payables have credit balances, and then common stock and revenue have credit balances, dividends and the expenses have debit balances. Well, how do you know that all of those are balanced? Do the debits, do all the balances on the debit side equal all the balances on the credit side. That's what a trial balance tells us. When we list all the accounts, and that's all we're doing, we're listing all the accounts in the order that you saw them, in the exact order that you saw them. This is exact order. Cash, supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment. Let's go back. Cash, supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment. The exact order of the assets shown in the ledger will be listed accordingly. All of those accounts have debit balances. We understand where we got these balances exactly from that page. We had uh, three liability accounts. All liability accounts have credit balances. And all we're doing here is we're making sure the debit balances and the credit balances are equal in our ledger. Common stock has a credit balance. Dividends has that debit balance. Again, you know where we're getting all these numbers, right? We're simply taking them balances from the ledger. These are where the balances are from. All of these balances are simply being, and in the order you see them, by the way, the order that they're listed here, right? Notes payable, accounts payable, under service revenue, common stock, dividends, service revenue, and your expenses. That order <coughs> is what you see here. Notes payable, accounts payable, under service revenue, common stock, dividends, service revenue, the expenses. The exact same order you, sh you saw them in the ledger is the exact same order they will be in the trial balance because the trial balance is simply looking at the balances in the ledger. So they wouldn't be a different order, they'd be the same order because it's the same book you're looking at. Expenses, as you know, have debit balances, revenue has credit balances. Add up all your debits, add up all your credits. They should equal, that's what a trial balance does. That's all a trial balance does, is it tells us, okay, <clears throat> We have this ledger that has all these balances. This account has a debit balance. This account has a credit balance. Well, if we did our accounting right, all those balances should equal. 
The debit side has to equal the credit side, right? We did that in the journal. For every debit we put in the journal, we had an equal credit we put in the journal. Yes? So if we did that right and we posted it right, then our ledger is also going to be balanced. And this basically tells us that our ledger is indeed balanced. <clears throat> okay. Um, this is a do it exercise that you should review on page 120 and 121. So again, on page 120 uh, over to 121, <clears throat> there's that do it exercise. It shows you that this is a, uh, this is the ledger from Snowgo. It's not in the proper order. That's the only thing I don't like when they introduce this stuff is it's not in the proper order. I would have put it in more proper order and given you this type of a question later on. But <coughs> you already know what the uh, order in the ledger is. Assets are listed in the order on the classified balance sheet. Liabilities are listed next in the order on the balance sheet. Stockholders equity is listed, ending with dividends. Revenues are listed, then your expenses are listed. So that's the order you're gonna put these in, basically. When you're done putting them in order, this is what the order would look like. Assets are listed first through equipment. Liabilities are listed. Uh, equity is listed, ending with dividends. Revenue is listed, and your expenses are listed. Okay. Uh, again, they, they just put these expenses in uh, any order. Uh, normally, you would be able to know the order because you'd be looking at the ledger, and the ledger gives you the order. So that's another reason I don't like this particular one. But anyway, all of these accounts, asset accounts, dividends accounts, and your expense accounts have debit balances. Add up all your debit balances. You know your liability accounts, your stockholders equity accounts and revenue have credit balances. Add up all your credit balances, they should equal. And that's basically what a trial balance does. The numbers, you're not calculating any numbers. All the numbers are given to you in the ledger. All you're doing is making sure they're, they're put in the proper order. Remember assets first, liabilities second, stockholders equity third, ending with dividends. Oh, my pen is stuck here. Revenues are listed fourth, expenses are listed fifth. The exact same order. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we come back to our main screen for questions. <clears throat> 